Hi everybody, welcome back. On with the story. When Thursday came around and uh, we headed out to the college where the meeting would be, um, he explained why he had been annoyed when I was speaking with him. He was tired because he was helping his mom move. That was the last day. This was the last uh, day of cleaning out the house and they'd moved to another house. So he was exhausted from that and he was also exhausted because he was uh, transitioning from a night job to a day job. So he was annoyed when I kept interrupting him. Um, the reason also why he had wanted, uh, inter wanted to take me out to this meeting was they were always looking for more members. They, um, the more the merrier, the more they could do with the group. Um, and uh, particularly if you were a paying member, because there was a regular membership and there was paid membership. So, um, and he gave me some background um, that the group had started, the SCA had started in the 1970, early 1970s out in California and now it was worldwide. And uh, it wasn't just dressing up in silly costumes and having food, it was dressing up in the various time periods because it went from uh, the fall of the Roman Empire to the beginning, just before the Renaissance. So that was a very long period of time. It went worldwide. They had people that were into various parts of history. And there was all kinds of aspects to it, as I was later to find out when we actually got to the meeting. We got there and I was, I'm an introvert by nature. <laughs> and so it was, I was excited because I wanted to make new friends, but I was very intimidated. And when I got to the group, we got there about half an hour later, early, I saw all these people and everybody was older than me. And that was intimidating. <laughs> so he introduced me to the various people who were his friends and officers in the group. And they weren't just officers, they were their master and mistress, which I love the titles. And this was the brewing master and this was the dance mistress. And she was also the cooking mistress. There was a sewing group. There was um, the fighting, which I found out wasn't choreographed, not like a Renaissance thing where it's all choreographed. This was not choreographed, so they tried to be as safe as possible. And I met the Knight Marshal, and um, he was the person who was in charge of all the fighting and making sure it was as safe as it could be. And, and it was really exciting and, and somewhat overwhelming. So finally the meeting started. And the Seneschal was a really nice man, and he was very um, soft-spoken. And as the, as the meeting went on, I noticed Eddie was kind of like, almost like a class clown in the back, making comments, getting people to laugh, getting it to be a little less serious than what it was. And he'd also make uh, very pointed questions to keep the meeting on focus. And I was finding this really like, huh, he, he, he's, he's got a brain, he's funny. And uh, so we went through the, finished the meeting, it was about two hours long, and I said a lot of information. Um, he was occasionally explaining things as he could without interrupt softly in my ear so I could, wouldn't be, uh, so we wouldn't, wouldn't interrupt the meeting. Said the goodbyes to everybody who'd come in late and we left. Um, we didn't talk a lot on the way back home, just a little bit as I asked questions. He wasn't going, he wasn't forcing me to ask questions. He was just like, if I asked a question, he'd elaborate. So finally we got to the end. Um, we got back to my house. It was about 10-ish at night and I thought, well, we could talk more and I invited him in. But he said he couldn't because he was still, fit, as I said, finishing up. He had work to go to that night. It was probably his last week, I think it was, at that job. And um, he had to go to work, but he could stop by next Tuesday night if that was okay with me. And I thought about it and I said, yeah, yeah, next Tuesday would be good. I went into, um, I said good night and I went into my room and I thought about the whole evening and it had been a bad year and a half for me. Um, I, as an introvert, you, you tend to only have a very small group of friends that are very, you know, like best friends. 
And my group had been f me, my friend H, my friend C and K, who were identical twins, and that was it, the core group. And then we had two other friends. One was a friend of H, and the other one was a friend of the twins, and that was it. That was the core group. In the last year and a half, H, who had been my best friend from ninth, from since I was nine, we had had a really bad falling out and we weren't even friends anymore um, all those years down the drain. And um, it had been very painful and very confusing. And then um, in September of the year before, September, early October, there was a suicide and one of the twins was gone, um, which devastated the entire core group. Um, it made C have to, he had to go for, uh, he ended up in a mental hospital from the shock and he had been in there for months and months till he got over it to an, as much as he could. So now this year that we were in, I no longer had H. I no longer had the two peripheral people because their personal lives were getting so chaotic and crazy that um, they had withdrawn to take care of their own business and so now the only person I had left as a friend was C. And I was feeling very vulnerable. I mean I have trust issues anyway but I felt le <laughs> even more like I don't trust anybody. So I was entirely going on my gut because I had also had some terrible things happen uh, about two months earlier. So now I didn't trust anybody and unless I got a good feeling off of them right from the beginning, I didn't even speak to them. I didn't get a bad feeling off of this person, Eddie. So I figured, yeah, on Tuesday he needs to be tested. I would, I would have C come over and he could really clearly just ask him questions, see where his p opinions were on things, so forth and so on, kind of give him the test. Test him to see if he would be a good friend for me. Because he knew he was my best friend. He would know what would work for me. So that was it. Um, I had a criteria. My best friend knew this criteria. You had to be accepting of LGBT. You had to be open-minded. You had to not take things seriously. Life was too serious to take serious. I called up my friend C. I told him what was going on. He totally agreed and understood my reasonings. He said, sure, I'll come over. I'll test this guy. Don't you worry about it. I'll put him through it. And we will find out if he's going to be a good friend for you. Will he make the test? We'll find out in the next episode. <laughs> Have a great week. Um, I'll see you then. Thank you. Please like, subscribe, comment. I, I look forward to any comments you have. Um, see you next week. Bye.